Here is a story that we bet you're going to be telling your friends about tomorrow. That is why it is tonight's breakout. Scientists have made a pretty startling discovery about DNA evidence, they say. It turns out that genetic fingerprints uh, used to solve all those murders, crack all those cold cases, and free all those wrongly convicted suspects can be faked in a laboratory and even planted, theoretically, at a crime scene. CNN's Jim Clancy shows us how. The fast-paced crime series CSI weaves its fictional television tales with recurring scenes depicting DNA science. The TV laboratory reinforces the notion once the DNA evidence is in, the crime is solved. But what would Horatio Cain say if we told him his DNA evidence was forged, his suspect framed? I say, bring it on. It's scary. It is absolutely scary because standard uh, procedures for identification of DNA cannot differentiate between uh, DNA which is uh, natural, in vivo DNA what we call, or uh, artificial DNA which was manufactured in a lab. Elan Ganor's Israeli firm Nucleics Limited published a paper in a respected journal showing how laboratory manufactured DNA was indistinguishable from real DNA. The possibilities are scary. Could DNA be manufactured in a lab and then spread around a crime scene? By developing a test that does distinguish between the two, the company stands to make millions. But some scientists are skeptical a clear and present danger exists. It could be scary someday uh, if, because of certainly the ability to make synthetic DNA and to spoof such things is certainly technically feasible. It's just not clear whether it is the sort of thing that a criminal would think to do or want to do. Questioning the motives for releasing such news and possible turmoil in the criminal justice system, some forensic experts decline to comment on this story for CNN. But Nucleics and its scientists insist it isn't about money, it's about a loophole that scientists never closed and never wanted to admit. The good part of this news is that this loophole can be easily and quickly closed and uh, maintain uh, the gold standard of DNA fingerprinting, which is uh, far better than the traditional fingerprinting or other ways of human identification. Geneticist George Church says after reading the study, he's convinced that laboratories are already equipped to even get around this new test or assay. Almost anything that you can imagine turning into an assay could be spoofed. Uh, uh, to say one thing is much harder to spoof than another, I think, is uh, a very premature conclusion. It is not premature to tell you it's easier than ever for someone to get a tiny sample of your DNA, reproducing vials of it in a laboratory. There's no case of laboratory DNA being used to frame a suspect. But Professor Church of Harvard says this story, this news, inevitably does bring us closer to that first case. Jim Clancy, CNN Atlanta. So could this be a game changer for cops, prosecutors, even criminals? Uh, defense attorney Michael Cardoza joining us from San Francisco tonight. He's also worked on the other side as a prosecutor. And of course, back with me, senior legal analyst Jeff Tubin here in New York. Um, Jeff, for giving your take, could this pose some real problems here? I, I'm not worried about it. DNA is still the gold standard. It is better than fingerprints. It's better than bite marks. It's better than hair and fiber. And the theoretical possibility that someone might be able to fabricate DNA in a laboratory, you know, remember, you can always plan evidence. Anybody who's, who read Scott Turow's Presumed Innocent or saw the movie knows that you can plant evidence at a crime scene. That hasn't changed. But the scientific basis for DNA is exquisitely refined. And this theoretical possibility, I don't think, is much of a worry. Michael, though, I know you're a little bit more concerned about what this could mean, how it could impact investigations. Well, as a criminal defense attorney now, I sort of like it. It opens up an entire avenue of cross-examination that was never there before. Can you imagine their expert, the prosecutor's expert on the stand? We will now be able to ask them. It's possible to fabricate DNA. The, uh, the marketing that's going on here by this company, though, I think is fabulous because they're saying, look, here's how you uh, fabricate DNA, and oh, by the way, we have the product that uh, will show the difference between a true DNA and a fabricated DNA. 
So this won't be accepted right away, but it will give a lot of defense attorneys something to talk about in court. It will make prosecutors work a lot harder. It might make our job a tiny bit easier right now. Well, you make two interesting points I want to follow up on, Michael. First of all, wh why wouldn't it happen right away? I mean, why wouldn't, theoretically, a defense attorney start raising this before a jury soon? Oh, you will start raising it, but the question then will be, can the prosecution bring the test in that shows that it's fabricated DNA? Because there's something, and I'm sure Jeff's familiar with it, the Kelly Fry test, and that's will that test be accepted in the scientific community? So it's going to open up all sorts of legal issues. I guarantee you some defense attorney listening tonight that has a DNA uh, case going on right now will probably be pulling this article offline tonight and be asking the prosecutor's DNA expert about this, and it may with some jurors raise a reasonable doubt. Well, let me follow up or have you, Jeff, follow up on Michael's other point that this, uh, you may want to question the motives perhaps of this company and their marketing plan. Um, is, is that maybe what's behind this, uh, them trying to promote this idea for, for their own business? And, well, I, and I don't think there's any doubt that that's why they did this, is to promote their, th this product that supposedly can tell the difference. That doesn't make them wrong. It just explains their motives. But I, I think we need to keep in mind that in the history of forensics and DNA, there has never been a case where this has even been suggested as a possibility that manufactured DNA was substituted for real DNA. So, you know, that is a, a pretty good record so that, the, the, you know, sure, defense attorneys should use it in cross-examination and try to raise a doubt. But how much doubt will it really raise? Well, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting, perhaps, uh, Michael, to see who who the first uh, defense attorney is who tries this. Fair enough. Probably someone in trial right now. I, I think Michael's absolutely right about that. All right. You know, Ma you Michael, go with what you have. Michael Cordoza joining us tonight, along with Jeff Tubin, on this uh, very interesting story. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, tonight, 